Hey, uh, my name is Kimmy. My family and I are new immigrants here in Canada in the province of Saskatchewan. So for today's video, I will be listing down the steps on how to apply for PNP Express Entry based on my application experience. I will also be sharing my application process timeline with you. Now, this video might be a little long, but if you are interested to apply for Canadian immigration through provincial nomination, or you may already be in the pool of applicants looking for answers or just references with how the process works, well, you have found the right video. So let's begin. Let's now proceed and start with the steps for Saskatchewan provincial nomination and express entry. So, the first thing that you need to do is to check your eligibility to apply and then create your Express Entry profile. Once you have completed the eligibility check and find out that you are eligible, you will be receiving a personal reference number which you shall be using to proceed and create your Express Entry profile. Then, based on your answers from the eligibility check, you will have your CRS points. The maximum points for Express Entry is 1,200. Now, for the applicants who meet the minimum score depending on the draw, they are the ones that will receive their invitation to apply. While there is no specific schedule, the draw usually happens every two weeks. And by using the previous draws as a reference from January to February 2023, the ideal CRS score to get invited is at least 490. But for provincial nominees, you need higher points of at least 720 and above since successful nomination gives, you the, gives the applicant an additional 600 points. Then, after you create your Express Entry profile, you will now have your profile number and you will be provided with a job seeker code. You will receive a form containing these details on your email. And you should take note of this because you will need this to create your PNP profile. I also provided links on the description below where you can check your eligibility, create your Express Entry profile, and some references to read more about the comprehensive ranking system as well as CRS calculator if you want to check yours before you proceed and apply or you proceed with your eligibility to apply. Now, let me give you a little reference on the CRS system or the comprehensive ranking system. This is a points-based system used by Canada to assess and score the applicant's profile. As mentioned a while back, the maximum points to achieve is 1,200, on which you get 600 maximum points on core factors and another 600 for additional factors. Overall, the factors are divided into four, which are human capital, spouse or common law partner points, skill transferability, and additional points. To briefly explain on how the scoring works, let me use my profile scores as an example. First, for the human capital factor, we gain points from age. Then we also gain points from our level of education based on our ECA result. We also get points on language proficiency. In my case, I took the IELTS. So for my application, English is the first official language. And then the second official language is French, on which I am not in any way proficient and I did not take the TEF, which is the French language proficiency exam. That is why I have zero points for this. I also have zero points on Canadian work experience. So for this factor, I get a total of 317 points. You must also take note that for the level of education, you get higher points if your ECA is equivalent to a master's or doctorate degree. And for IELTS, if you get higher IELTS result, that will also give you higher points for language proficiency. Next, we have factor B. And this is specifically for your spouse or common law partner. If you don't have a spouse or you're single, the points on each line will be different. You can check the link on the CRS grid on the description below for this one. So, going back on the scores, I had zero points for this one because my husband did not take the IELTS exam and we did not apply an ECA for him. Because aside from it will be an additional cost for us, it is a cost that we can, ab we can avoid spending. And we also decided not to claim for these points because we are going to proceed and apply for a provincial nomination anyway. On which, provincial nomination will give my profile additional 600 points if I get nominated. This is also the reason why you must know the right pathway for your qualifications before you apply. I explained this further on my previous video. I'll include the link of that below if you would like to watch it. 
Next and third factor is the skill transferability. I actually don't know how to explain this and how they give scores in this, but basically, this is for your educational attainment and work experience in your home country. I just copied the points that I have in my ITA and I had a total of 38, 38 points for this. And yes, when you receive your ITA, it will show you the breakdown of your garnered points. Moving on with the last factor, which is the additional points. I was able to get 600 points because of my Saskatchewan Provincial nomination. And since the maximum points for this is just 600, the points of having a sibling in Canada has been disregarded. You just have to remember that when you are applying for provincial nomination, the first step is to create your express entry profile. So upon creation of your profile, you will not yet have the 600 points. The points will only be reflected on your express entry profile when you successfully get the nomination from the province. Also, the reason why you need to create your express entry profile first is because you need to provide your express entry profile number when you create your PNP profile, which this will be your next step. And this brings us to the second step. This is to create your provincial nomination profile, which in my case, this is the SINP through OASIS. When you register your profile, you also provide your express entry profile number to link your PNP application on it. Then you can now create your expression of interest or EOI. This is not your application to SINP yet. This is only the process where you give your intentions to the province by providing your quali qualifications to determine your eligibility to apply. SINP is also using a point system for eligibility. And the maximum points that you can get for SINP is 110. The minimum score to get an invitation to apply is 60 points. But this also varies depending on the draw. As mentioned, SINP also uses point system to evaluate the applicant's eligibility. And this is divided into two factors on which you get 80 points for what is called the labor market success and 30 points for your connection to Saskatchewan. So, for the market labor success, you are given points for your ECA, your work experience, and your language proficiency. And as I have explained on my previous video, you should be sure that even before you start your application, you must have your ECA and IELTS results ready. And you should also start preparing for your work experience documents. And as for my score on this factor, I got 67 points for my credentials. The second factor is your connection to Saskatchewan. The maximum points that you can claim is 30 points. So if you already have a job offer from a company based in the province, you get 30 points. Or if you have a relative living in Saskatchewan, this will give you 20 points. And you get 5 points if you have work experience or if you have studied previously in, this, in Saskatchewan. I got 20 points on this factor, so that gave me a total of 87 points for SINP. And now we move to the third step, which is waiting. After you submit an EOI, the only thing that you can do is to patiently wait for the next draw schedule. And then see if you get an invitation to apply, which is our fourth step. So when you finally receive your invitation to apply, the ball is now in your hands until you submit your application. And now that you have your ITA, the fifth step is for you to submit your application. On this step, you now have to provide proof of documents to supplement your answers on your EOI. Steps and requirements will be provided in your OASIS account. So once you have uploaded everything and by the time you submit, you need to pay the application fee of 350 Canadian dollars. And take note that this is not refundable, whether you get nominated or you get declined. So make sure that there are no misrepresentations on your documents and never provide false information on any stage of your application. Immigration officers are strict on this. After submission, your application goes through the process of screening to check if you have uploaded your requirements correctly and completely, and after which it will go through an assessment. This is the step where if they need additional or update on your documents, you will receive an ADR or the additional document requirement on your OASIS account. This usually has a shorter time frame for you to submit, 
not all applications get ADR. You may also get the status of in process while your application is on this stage before you receive the most awaited final decision. On which should be our sixth step, which is to receive your SINP nomination. Once you are nominated, you will receive a nomination letter on your OASIS account. And this will be linked to your Express Entry profile, which is our seventh step. At this point, what you need to do is to check your Express Entry profile and accept the nomination there. And after you accept the nomination, the next thing to do is wait for the next Express Entry draw to receive your invitation to apply for Express Entry. And when you finally get that ITA, the next step is to review your document checklist in your Express Entry account and completely submit the requirements listed. This step is just similar to the submission stage of SINP. This should be quite easy because the documents that you uploaded on your SINP account will mostly be uploaded here on your Express Entry checklist. There may be additional though like medical appointment or results for example. So, after you completed the uploads on your checklist, and as you submit, you will be paying for the PR fees here. I provided the link below for the list of fees, and for my application, for a family of three, I paid a total amount of 3130 Canadian dollars upon submission. And of course, again, after submission, the next thing and only thing to do is wait for the final decision. But while waiting for the final, final, final decision, you may slowly receive instructions on your profile for visa processing until you receive your COPR or your confirmation of permanent residence. And that will be all for the application steps. Now, let's proceed with my application timeline. Let's begin with my profile. I was 31 years old at the time of my PNP application. I am now 32. <laughs> My NOC is 1225, Purchasing Agents and Officers. I have a family of three. My country of origin is Philippines, and I went through the process with DIY application. Now for the timeline, let me separate the SINP nomination and the Express Entry Approval. So, for SINP, I submitted my EOI on February 11. Then after two weeks, I was fortunate to receive my ITA. The time between the ITA and submission of application falls on my responsibility, and it took me four weeks to completely upload all my requirements and submit. So after submission, you will receive a letter which is the Acknowledgement of Receipt, or what we call the AOR. From the date of AOR, I had a long wait of 33 weeks before I received the nomination in November 2021. Patience was really a virtue during that time. Though, the processing times in 2021 has really slowed down because of the pandemic, so it was just okay. Overall, it was a 10-month process from submission to nomination, but I would like to take off the four weeks or one month that was under my control, which is the submission of documents. This is to show the actual processing time of the SINP system alone. And with that consideration, the processing time for my SINP application is 9 months. There are a few things to note with my application, though, before we proceed with my Express Entry timeline. The IELTS result that I submitted on my SINP had expired during the process, and I needed to retake one to update my Express Entry profile, not the SINP. This is because my first Express Entry profile expired on February 2022, so I need to create a new profile and link my SN SINP nomination with my new profile. And I had to pause for a bit to create a new profile. And the reason why I had to wait for my Express Entry profile to expire and create a new one is because I maximized the time between my nomination date and the expiration date of my nomination to replenish my proof of funds and make sure that my six months maintaining balance meets the required Canadian dollar amount for my family of three. So long story short, pandemic happened and I was just fortunate enough that there is enough time for us to update our proof of funds. So moving on with my Express Entry timeline. I created my new Express Entry profile and updated my SINP profile with my new Express Entry profile number. Then after a week, 
I got an updated nomination letter and my nomination was linked. Then I accepted it on March 30. Similar to SINP, it took me one month again to prepare, upload, and complete my requirements on the document checklist. Medical results or proof of medical appointment was already included in my checklist, and since there are no immediate schedule available with the accredited clinic, I only submitted the proof of appointment, then showed up to our appointment by May 31. At this point, it was the clinic who directly submitted our medical results to IRCC. Then after our medical schedule, I received an ADR after two months for a clear and full copy of my husband's passport. Apparently, the one I submitted was cropped and pixelated, and thank God it was okay to resubmit a better copy. And it was after this stage that every step came in quickly, as in every week, we get more excited every week with the updates that we are receiving. So, after a week from the ADR submission, there was an update on our application status that says medical past. Then, after a week again, we received the instructions for biometrics. So we booked the earliest possible schedule at the VFS office. Then after one week again, we received the email for visa instructions. We then booked the earliest possible schedule to submit our passports, which was three days after I received the email. And one day after passport submission, my application status says application approved. I wanted to do cartwheels at this point, but we had to contain the excitement because we wanted to hold the COPR and our visas. Lo and behold, after two days, those has been delivered and it was definitely official at this point. We are moving to Canada. Well, anyway, going back to the timeline, for the express entry process itself, excluding the time under my responsibility, the process was 17 weeks or 4 months. So to summarize my timeline, the system timeline excluding my preparation time, the SINP process took 9 months, and the express entry process was 4 months. In total, it was 13 months of processing time from PNP application to express entry approval. But if we consider and include my preparation time, the whole process took 18 months. 10 months for SINP and 8 months for express entry. And there we have it guys. And if you were still watching at this point, thank you so so much. I want you to know that I truly appreciate your time watching this video. And I hope you find it helpful in any way. Again, Thank you so very much and I'll see you on the next one. Bye!